actually pretty nice. They are. Hey, Adam. Yep. Come on back, you'll get it. Professional backer upper. And maybe land her right here. That's good. All right, my buddy Adam just showed up. What do we got here, Adam? Oh, this is some pallet racking. I bought at a, uh, it was an online auction. It came out of a pharmaceutical company in Wexford. They had thousands of feet of this stuff, and I forget what I ended up with, but it was like 400 and some feet, 12 foot high, and uh, I use it for storing my skid loader buckets. Yeah, what I'd like to do, once we pour the floor in the pavilion, just on one side where I can get to it from the outside. Right. You know what I mean? And I like yep. put some attachments yeah. on it. It works great for that stuff. It gets your stuff up off the ground and Save space. And yes, yes. And space is a prime thing to have. And then, after we get this unloaded, we're going to an auction that gives a whole new meaning to Chinese auction. That's right. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, uh, it, it's an online auction. That's uh, they, they. Those can get a little addictive. I, uh, I've, I'm always on one somewhere and uh you can get some pretty good buys on stuff so today is like the preview and there's a pre-bid so people are bidding right now including myself on a few items and then uh the auction starts tomorrow at noon i imagine they just run through everything real quick is it a live auction as well as it's it? not it's live just it's online, online yeah. only so it'll be over tomorrow and then you can start picking stuff up wednesday uh, through Friday, so is that you, if you buy stuff, is that going to be Melissa's Valentine's Day present? That'll be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to take it to your place for a while until things calm down. Okay, <laughs> we can arrange that. Good. Yeah. So this is a nice truck. Tell me about this, Adam. You got the 7.3 in this one, right? This is a 7.3 truck, yeah. It looks like a, it has a 2008 to 2010 front end on it. I put that on, uh, I think about six years ago now. Um, but it's a 99, it's got 310,000 miles on it. Um, it's a 7.3 truck with a six speed manual transmission. Uh, it's got a PTO 10 foot hoist bed on it. Um, yeah, it's really nice. It's a 550. The front end says F250, but that's what the front clip came off of was a pickup. And I never changed the badges. It's four-wheel drive. Um, I've, I've used this truck a lot. And uh, when, I, when I got it, it was white. And uh, it was an XL model. It had manual windows, manual door locks. And when I put the doors and the front clip on it off of the other truck, um, I hooked all that stuff up, so now it has power folding, telescope mirrors, power windows, door locks. You got everything working? Yeah, everything works, yep. That's he awesome. Heated mirrors, um, and uh, I just got done. I put a new radio in it, it's got a backup camera in it now, navigation, um, 
Yeah. Which, which I don't use the truck very much anymore with my big trucks I have. But Now, wouldn't it be nice if they made a new truck like this today oh, with I, that 7.3 with no emissions and you still got all the bells and whistles in I'd, it? I'd go buy one tomorrow. Yeah, no joke. Yeah, um, but this has been a, a good truck to me. And uh, Yeah, 10-foot body on it. Yeah, the truck didn't have, it was, like I said, work truck model. It didn't have cruise. I put a steering wheel. Believe it or not, to have this truck have cruise control, all you had to do was take a steering wheel out of a truck that had cruise and change what they call the clock spring in the column, and the truck has cruise really? control now. Yeah. If you had to guess, how I know it's putting you on the spot, but how many hours do you think you got in getting this truck the way it is? Uh, I, have, I have no idea. Um, there's a few. There's definitely a few. Um, before I painted, the, all I did was paint the cab. Me and a buddy and his dad, we painted the cab and we bolted the parts on the rest of the truck. Um, but before I, before we did that, I sent it out. The frame was sandblasted, the bed was blasted, everything was painted, which it's showing its age now. But uh, um, so I don't know about how, how many hours, but there's quite a few tied up in it. Yeah. Um, and then I just got. I just got done getting it ready for this season. There's new shocks on it, new sway bar bushings, put a new front drive shaft in it, U-joints in the front axle, uh, got an oil change. Uh, I did my head, redid my headliner. This is the first time I ever did a headliner. Uh, it came out okay. It was gray before. Oh it was yeah. Hanging down. That looks nice. And I did uh, flannel. That's very nice. Um, yeah, although you got a lot of time in it. To replace this, you're looking at about a hundred thousand. Yeah. You know what I mean? About a hundred thousand dollars for a new one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're not cheap. But uh that's I like it. It starts every time you hit the key, so Yeah, seven three, I still kick myself. We used to have an excursion. I think I sold it with two hundred and four two hundred and twenty, two hundred and thirty thousand miles on it or something. I got a good buck out of it, you know what I mean? But uh Yeah. Yeah, that was the good one. Yep. That's what I was telling Adam. The seven three, plenty of power, not enough to hurt themselves, which is why they run forever. Yes, you know. Yep, yep. And that's so. this truck does good. Um, you get it out on the road. Once you get it rolling, it it doesn't hurt for power at all. Yeah. And I've had some heavy stuff on it behind behind it. Um, not that it's always been legal, but this truck hauls six ton regularly, or it, or it has. Yeah. And uh, if I'm off site hauling moving material on site with it, it i would fill it there was 10 inch sideboards on it and fill the bed till it was running off every side and yeah that pto pump puts the bed up it doesn't have no problem dumping the weight off it's it's done a good job very nice well you ready to hit the road yep adam you think we should go interview the guy on a telehandler i don't think today's a good day for that he's not having a good day he's he's a little grumpy so this is the that's a landscape rake right there. I don't know what land honor is. I'm guessing Chinese, Adam. What do you think? I would say, yeah. This is a log grapple right here. Yeah. But really, a lot of this stuff, if you weren't using it every single day, you know what I mean? It'd probably be all right. So. Augers. There's a nice gate. 14 foot. I could put that at the entrance of my new road going out in the woods there. There you It'd be go. Be a little overkill. Yeah. But these toolboxes, I noticed this morning they are online. You could buy this. I found these. They're about twenty three hundred bucks, and right now they're up to about uh, nine hundred dollars. Yeah. Is what they're up to. They're, they're not a bad workbench. Right. It'd be nice to open the drawers, see how they, you know. Yeah. How nice they got the ball bearings are. and stuff. They say, but who knows, you know. They're steam jennies. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see these online. I didn't either. That's a whole skid. Tank and everything. Chonda motor. <laughs> yep. I don't, I don't even remember. Wow. Jiangsu. <laughs> huh. Probably a 300 gallon tank at least. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Where do you think that came from? <laughs> yeah. Not made in America. Some grapples. These are all right now around 450, 500 bucks is yeah. what these are. Currently. I was kind of interested in these hoppers right here. Uh, 
but they're currently up to like 850 bucks and I found them online for uh, like 970 plus shipping but I think by the time I auction by the time it's all over there's an anvil yeah I saw those on there yeah, I'm surprised I didn't see these online yet. Maybe yeah. they just got these ones in. Right. Do you know what a T300 sold for new in 2006 skid loader? That would be real equivalent to my T770. Um, what year? 2006. 40,000. Okay, that one over there, there's a 2006 T300 skid loader. It's at 21,000 with like 3,300 hours on it right really? now. Really? Wow. Yeah. Got these little buggers here, they're on tracks. So these, yeah, there's a bucket, they self-load, and then the bed dumps. I wonder what kind of engine's on these. They're gassers for sure. So it, it's an actual Briggs. Yeah, it's a Briggs engine on it. Yeah, it is. Six and a half horsepower. Six and a half horse. Now I saw these currently, they're at about 1800 bucks for one of these. Is that Briggs? From what I've seen online, they are. So this is a Land Hero, 23 horsepower, 5.3 feet, cubic feet bucket capacity. Lift capacity, 840 pounds. Yeah, look at those uh, drive motors where the hoses are on yeah, them. Yeah, they're pretty pretty exposed there. Somebody ought to start building guards for those. Yeah, a little mechanical thumb. Has auxiliary hydraulics on it. You could put a hydraulic on it. It'll be 84 inch. Yeah, I'd say so. Screening bucket. Got two of them. What are these for stumps? Yeah, stump buckets. There's a mulcher. Oh yeah, it's like a disc mulcher. Yeah, I don't know what kind of grass they got in China, but Adam just said, <laughs> it's, yeah. It, I said that my push mower has blades as big as that. It must be that Chinese stilt grass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah, an MTD at Lowe's got bigger blades on it than that. But these little buggers here, AGT. Now you have a dingo, but it's kind of like a real, real... I have a Toro Dingo, yeah. I have one of the smaller ones. Um, it has a Kohler motor. I think it's rated at 20 horse. Look, they can give you a toolbox. Yeah. I don't see the uh, sign for this one. So it's got a 739cc. That's, that's bigger than the one over there. Yeah. These mowers, though, my goodness. Yeah, that's, I'm not a fan. Definitely not a fan. I bought that, I think you saw it at my house, that brush hug I bought, and uh, the blades on it are four or five inches wide, and they're three-quarter inch steel. That's a big difference between yeah. these. <laughs> Here's a sickle bar mower. Yep. Tons of chains and slings, binders. Why are these just pins here? Yeah, machine pins, yep. Straps. Nice little box with it too. Little topsoil screen over here. How much juice that takes to run? I thought I saw online this was three fades. <laughs> that might have been, that might have been something else I saw on marketplace that was a screener like that. Did you ever use one of these stump pullers, Adam? No. Yeah. Look at them forks. Here, this dumper over here is not uh, covered up. 
Boy, that's a little tinker toy though. <laughs> Imagine the damage my grandson could do with one of these. You could send him out to load up firewood rounds. <laughs> yeah. Put a little bucket on it. Land Hero. Service at USA Land Hero. That must be like the importer or something, right? I would say. Mini excavator. So these ones are 13 and a half horsepower. Huh. These have a plate to stand on too, so you, can, you don't even have to walk, you can stand on them. This is nothing like the grader you got. No. That's, uh, you got the laser set up on yours, right? Mine has the lasers, yeah, and it, it works slick. We just did a building this, this year with it, uh, 60 by 80, and I had another machine there feeding me stone, and one pass went through, and it put it right on grade, and yeah, it, it worked good. There. Yeah, it's a 40-footer? It gotta be. Yeah, and it's a high cube, I think, isn't it? Yeah. It's higher than normal? So you got the big doors on the end, plus doors on that side. Yeah. I was telling Adam, iDry I makes a kiln. They make several different types, but the one you can just bolt right up to a building. It has everything. It's all self-contained, and they use shipping containers. If you had one of these with a, at least a 12 or 16-foot door, it would be perfect for bringing the lumber in this way. But, uh, yeah, like you were saying, you could build off of this, too. Yeah, you know? yeah. I like that. Well, they have some of those kits here. For the, the hoops over top you know you put two so many feet apart and then you put a roof between them yeah be great for storing equipment outside huh yeah this is this is nice you don't have a trailer this big do you adam no i might have to hire somebody out to haul this home There's got to be a backstory on this. Why would it have an EPA sticker on it? I I don't know. Maybe there's a. Maybe it takes death fluid. Yeah. <laughs> First brings with death. Yeah. Huh. Now this would actually be kind of handy right here uh, for firewood. You can use those bags instead of, you know, use bags or IBC totes. The problem with the bags is picking them up and moving them because the straps don't, you have to almost have them on a pallet anyways to pick those firewood bags up. Yeah. But I've seen guys use these round bale attachments just to grab bags and set them in their dump trailer, put a couple in, push them ahead, put yeah. some more in. That's a good idea. Now some of this stuff is actually heavy. Yeah, it's built built heavy. Yep. Some of it's built real heavy and some of it just looks like it's made out of you know It's a tinker toy. <laughs> yeah. It's another one of those big screening buckets over there. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's actually kind of legit right there. Yeah. even be high flow yeah i think so look at the size of the lines yeah. on it and stuff if it was the standard flow but yeah rock hound disc mulcher is that guy yelling at people again <laughs> over there i think he was yeah that guy in a telehandler is having a really bad day for some reason he's yelling at everybody but these are a three-point finish mower right here for a uh skid loader which makes zero sense at all i don't you don't need a finish mower if you're running like a track machine. Any skid loader. Any skid loader, yeah. I guess you could put it on like a Bobcat Toolcat. That would be about it. Um, the mower looks built really heavy, but the casters look like they came off a Walmart shopping cart. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so much of this stuff, they're headed the right direction on it, and then just... Huh. These are for the mini skids. 
bucket for a mini skid. Containers? Uh, the hoops. Here's a tiller for a skid loader. Look at the tines on this animal. Ain't much to them. Nah, they're pretty thin. But yeah, I kind of wanted a couple of these, but like I said, these are... The price on these right now is right up with, uh, you know, and by the time the auction's over... Yeah, they're going to be more than the work. This is not the Vernig grapple that I got. A little trencher. Like a little mini jail here. <laughs> it work for like a security guard shack or a little office outside. They're actually pretty nice. They are. So yeah, when I left the house this morning, this T300, it was at $21,000. I think it's 3,100 hours on it. Uh, it's definitely been run. Tracks are decent. Now this one's a consignment. Yeah, yeah. Another little mini dumper. They have a bunch of these on there, and I think a lot of people are familiar with these because hardly anyone's bidding on these at all. Yeah. They're like 300 bucks, 400 bucks right now. I'm sure they'll go up. Yeah. But yeah, these brush hogs here, like I said, all in all, most of the stuff's what we expected so far. No, but some of the stuff's built fairly decent, Pretty you good, know what I yeah. mean? And some is just uh, not so much. Now, here's the ever popular mini excavators and i mean these are mini i think they all have brigs on them yeah so these ones here and these ones here they look the same just different colors right yeah those ones over there have the epa stickers on them yeah i don't understand that epa sticker on them don't get it at all they have less emissions because of that sticker yeah <laughs> oh wait, these might have them on it too, huh? Yep. Yeah, Adam just noticed these have a wing nut on them that you can lift the seat up. But as far as checking the oil or anything like that, uh, there's no way to get to anything unless e you not unbolt easily. the panels. Yeah. Have you ever ran anything this small, Adam? Nah, not this small. Huh. So, so far online, these things are right around $3,000, $3,500. But then you pay, you know, the buyer's premium at 10%. You're at 38% sales tax you know you're getting close to four yeah. uh, if i had to guess i think most of these will probably sell for close to five thousand all in you know what i mean i, I, I would say you're probably right yeah between four and five thousand that seems to be where these things have been selling at even the cup holder's tiny yeah huh. maybe i'm gonna see if it has a bat i'm not gonna start it but i'm gonna call oh, this one the keys out of it and these might have batteries in them. Yeah. I just noticed they're all sitting on a pallet too. There's a little mini grease gun in there, some kind of a screwdriver wrench. Huh. Your books. <laughs> you have to do a little research. I'm trying to still figure out what the difference is between the QH and just the 12. Like I said, these ones look a little bit beefier, a little bit better than the... A little more appealing pe to the eye, yeah. Yeah. So 
so we just finished up our uh, preview, kind of what we expected, don't you think? Yeah, yep. Some stuff was better than I thought. Yeah, but I think Adam figured this out. Uh, all the shipping containers, we're guessing, is what everything came into the country in. In, yeah. And then they bring them to the auction site and then uh, sell everything, including the containers. But the containers are actually pretty nice. What would you say? There's 20 mini excavators here, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yep. Probably 10 mini skids. At least 150 attachments or something. 100, 150 attachments. But, uh, yeah, I'm bidding on just a couple things. I don't know about a mini excavator. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I, I think they're they're pretty decent for what they sell for, you know? Yeah. Three, four, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 does not buy you much today. No, it doesn't. <laughs> No, you can't even buy like a... My landscape trailer, my 18-foot landscape trailer, I think I paid 2700 for that maybe four years ago. Yeah. Right? Same thing today, about 3900 or $4,100. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, the auction ends tomorrow sometime, and we'll continue this video on, and we'll go through, and I'll show you what uh, some of this stuff sold for, but... This is the first time I have ever been up close to one of these, and they are pretty much exactly as I expected. Uh, that one Andrew Camerata bought, though, it did work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's not he's not uh, easy on Yeah, he's, stuff. he's not the easiest on the equipment, and it he did work with it. So I think for around the house or the farm or something like that, I think people could get, you know, fair amount of work done with one save your back is way better than a shovel we're not getting any younger <laughs> all right well i'll report back at the end of the auction and we'll see what uh some of this stuff sold for and if we end up with anything who knows but a day out the prices are just seem to be going up pretty fast so we'll see all right it is now wednesday 4 30 a.m first thing in the morning i'm over here at the building just put some wood on the fire kind of getting the day started but Adam and I were at the auction, the preview, on Monday, and we looked at the equipment. Then the online auction was yesterday, and it started at noon, and uh, things moved pretty fast. I stayed on the entire time, and uh, just to kind of see what things were selling for, I bid on several items, did not win a thing. Uh, but right now, I want to go over some of the auction prices. They were kind of... Uh, Kind of surprising to me. They really were. All right, let's run through these prices here as quick as we can. Uh, like I said, this is the Rogers, Ohio online equipment auction. Uh, they had a bunch of pallet forks here. Uh, these are Mower King. I'm not sure. Never heard of them. Not much to them, but it looks like a decent pallet fork. They sold anywhere from 450 to, I think, about $600. Not too bad for a set of uh, pallet forks. Now these Mower King hydraulic brush cutters, I wasn't a big fan of these. They had a bunch of them. And that is kind of reflected in the price of what they sold for. You know, these are for a skid loader. Uh, but they sold, as you can see, 900, 800, 750, 750. Yeah, they didn't bring a whole lot. And I don't think too many people were interested in them. And now they have hydraulic adjustable pallet forks. And they brought pretty much the same price as your standard pallet forks. Pretty much the same. 625 625 There's 575 Here's a little hydraulic breaker. Uh, $1,400 for a hydraulic breaker. That's, uh, that's pretty reasonable. They have box broom attachment, 1100 There's two of those. Now, these are interesting. This is 3-point and 540 PTO attachment. So, in other words, you can put this on your skid loader, use the hydraulics, and then run three-point hitch attachments off the other end. Trying to see what that sold for. 375 bucks. 
uh, more adjustable pallet forks, 72 inch snow pusher, 550. Uh, this Wolverine V blade. Now this is actually a pretty heavy duty blade, 900 bucks, brand new. This is that Bobcat I was telling you about, a 2006. It sold for $21,000 with 3,000, a little over 3,000 hours on it. Now, here we have the mini excavators. This is just the H12. Now, all of these things sold for around $4,200. 41, 4,200 bucks. Uh, this is the H12. They also have the QH that we'll get into those in a minute. I kind of preferred the QH. But remember, when you buy one of these, 4200 there's a 10% buyer premium. Uh, so that would be another $420. you are at $4,600 and some change, plus sales tax. So you're at you know, $4,850, let's say. And then you have to go get it. And I have seen... You know, different places like Facebook Marketplace, you can buy these new for anywhere from $5,500, let us say, to $8,000. I've seen these things for. And you can't really run these beforehand, so you don't know, you don't know what you're getting. So you got about, you got about $5,000 in one. Like here's the QH12s right here. These were all right around $4,200, somewhere at $41. This one here is one that I bid on. I took this to $4,000, and it sold for $42. That seemed to be, if you wanted one, you could have gotten it at like $4,300, no question. Uh, some trencher attachments, $1,300. Uh, here's a vibratory roller, which I could use a vibratory roller, but this one is only 60 inches wide. Uh, I have a big skid loader. It would need, you know, like an 84-inch Wolverine 78-inch leveler attachment, 800 bucks. Scarfire ripper attachments. I should have bought some of these just in case. Pallet fork or yeah, fork extensions, six footers. They sold for 200, 175, 175, 175 bucks. Uh, there's a grapple bucket, $900, same thing, Wolverine. Here's one of those little Land Hero crawler dumpers, 2750, $2,750 for one of those. Power angle broom, eleven hundred bucks. Augers, all the prices are right here. If I'm not mentioning them, more augers. Plate compactor. I think you can get a new one at Harbor Freight for about the same. Close to it. The sickle bar mower attachment for a skid loader. It sold for fifteen hundred. Here's a tiller for a skid loader, $750. But I'll tell you what, these containers, they brought a they brought a pretty good buck. I mean, this is a 40-foot high cube, 6250, 6,000, 5,800. These are for the 40-footers, 6,000. Go to the next page, 5,800 and 5,800. More of these hydraulic brush cutters. Now, this is kind of surprising to me. These mini skid loaders, they brought about seven, eight hundred dollars more than the mini excavators. These were all right around forty nine hundred, forty eight. Let's see, fifty two hundred. See, yes, it looks like that range from about forty eight hundred to $5,200. More of these brush cutters. And they had a pile of those. Uh, 
had some like universal plates, chains, binders. These were actually pretty nice right here. These were uh, a whole box full, like a crate full of ratchet straps. There's a bunch in there. They were actually look pretty decent. <laughs> Boom pins, you know, they show what size they are in millimeters. Go to the next page. I actually bid on one of these too. It's a uh, concrete mixer, cement mixer. I could use one of those in the future. I thought if I could get one for like six, seven hundred dollars, I'd be all in. I ended up taking it to like eight hundred bucks, but it sold for thirteen hundred. Oh, this here, I bid on this as well. It's a log grapple. Uh, just four logs, but it is actually pretty heavy duty and uh, kind of looks like one you'd see on a big loader at like a, a big sawmill, but this one was for a skid loader just for moving logs. I think I took that. I should have kept bidding on that a little bit more. That one only sold for $850 and there was only one of those. So uh, there wasn't a lot of interest in that. Here's a uh, dirt rock screener right here. Now these are three phase. Sold for $2,000. You got bale spears, more forks, tree post pullers. They sold for $575. Looks like every one sold for that. Uh, what else do we have here? There's a rotating grapple. For a skid loader. <laughs> I wasn't real impressed with it, but it sold for $1,600. Power rakes. Now, these were like pretty heavy duty. These power rakes were. They seemed pretty well put together. $2,400, $2,300. Now, here's a different brand of mini excavator. These are the Land Heroes, which are the same as the mini dumpers. And what's surprising, these Land Heroes, they seem to like these a little bit more. Like this one sold for $4,700. Now, maybe... You know, we we're just kind of getting down to the wire on mini excavators and somebody wanted one and didn't get one. But that's about five, six hundred bucks more than what the other ones were selling for. Another one of these uh, mini dumpers here, twenty nine hundred. This one sold for uh, Land Hero Mini Skid, fifty seven hundred dollars. Greater attachments. Now, these big tool benches and cabinets, they're actually pretty nice. Uh, this one is 10 feet long. These sold for around $1,600. What else we've got? We're, pay we're getting to the end here, everybody. We're getting to the end. Mini skids, $5,700. Still in the crate. little container this is just an eight foot container but had a man door and a window these are really nice 2200 a 12 footer for 25 and a nine footer for 22 a bunch of traffic cones uh here's a wolverine stump grinder sold for 3900 dollars now these are nice actually i'd like to get one of these uh a decent one it's a sifting bucket for your skid loader big bucket and there's screens in the middle and it vibrates but like all the topsoil that I have piled up out there you could make some pretty nice topsoil in a hurry you know basically process topsoil with one of those I bid on this uh, Wolverine round bale grapple did not get it either. It was $1,300. I think I mentioned earlier in the video, I've seen people use those for uh, firewood bags. 
Now these buckets, oh, I bid on this 84 inch bucket right here and I was gonna go 800 bucks on this and it sold for 625. But what happened was they started with this 78 inch and they sold it and then they gave people the option to pick however many they wanted of any of the buckets. So someone bid on this and won it for 625 and they took both the 84 inchers for 625. I was kind of, uh, wasn't paying enough attention there what was going on. I thought for sure since they were different sizes they'd sell like the 78, the 72, and yes, for the ones that are the same size, you could pick as many as you got, but I missed that smooth bucket. I don't use this, I don't really, not a huge fan of smooth buckets, but they do have their uses. Uh, I like a tooth bucket, but I figured if I could get one for 800 bucks, I would. I bid on this rock hound right here. Now this sold for $3,100. Uh, same thing though, you know, you got a hydraulic motor on here. What happens if something happens to that motor and you get something in your hydraulic system? Maybe maybe I'm overreacting on that, but I don't know. Disc mulcher, 3500 bucks. Like a good quality disc mulcher, they're probably $30,000. So it's sold for about, yeah, 3500 Now these, a finish mower for a skid loader, don't understand that at all. Like Adam said, maybe a tool cat, but look look at these these casters on here. Can you imagine trying to cut grass, like finish lawn with that on a skid loader? I'd pass on that. People paid twelve hundred bucks for one though. Bunch of mini skid attachments. Got two more pages. Mini skid attachments, lots of those. Augers, more brush cutters. These are those uh, canopies, like 20 by 30, $1,600. Here's a grapple here, 1300 bucks. Doesn't look all that bad. These are these dump hoppers. I wanted a couple of these, uh, but like I said, thousand dollars those were. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. Root grapple got these fourteen foot gates, seven hundred dollars. It's another mini excavator, forty six hundred. Two post car lift. 10,000 pound capacity, 1,500 bucks. Go to the last page here, a couple horse trailers. And that's about it. All right, so that's the story as far as uh, what everything sold for at the Rogers, Ohio equipment auction. Like I said at the beginning of this video, everything there was pretty much what we expected as far as quality goes. I don't know what to think about those mini excavators and you know the mini skid loaders. I really don't. I think, you know, personally, I'm not a big fan of Chinese equipment, but I will say, I think if uh, someone takes care of their stuff, they could probably get some pretty good use out of one. However, they're so small, I think pretty much everything you do with one is going to be kind of maxing it out. You know what I'm saying? Now, if they do break, most of the parts you could probably get off the shelf. I'm not sure about the pumps and things like that. They are just what they are, a cheap little excavator. Now, you know, like those mini skid loaders, they, they were bringing a pretty decent buck is like a ditch witch or vermeer or a Kubota, you know are they worth 10 times as much or eight times as much like will you get eight times the life out of one of those you probably will you know but if you're not using something all the time i can see where people could use these uh plus you know they don't have the capacity i think the lift capacity 
on those mini skids is like 850 pounds is what it's rated at. I know most of the brands that we're familiar with, it's, it's more than that. And just little gas engines compared to diesel. That's what they are. They're just cheap little mini skids, cheap mini excavators. I guess, uh, I guess that's really all it comes down to. Uh, there's tons of videos out there on these things. I was actually thinking, I bid on one of the mini excavators and I thought I should try to get one and maybe do a couple videos on it, but there's a lot of them out there and uh, I just have other things I'd rather do with my time, to be honest. Then, uh, plus it would be really hard running that after running my 57. You know what I'm saying? It would, uh, that'd be hard to do. So it's kind of glad that I didn't get it. Now, some of the attachments, something that Adam mentioned, he brought up a good point. I don't think you can get hurt on those Wolverine attachments. I have no idea where those are made, by the way. But you'd have to watch out for hydraulic motors on them. You know, if the steel on the attachment isn't that great, if you bend up a, a grapple point or something, not the end of the world, you can straighten it. But if one of those hydraulic motors would grenade, you know, you don't know the quality of those, and you get, those all th get that all through your hydraulic system, that could be a very bad day. So I am no expert on any of this stuff, but I've been around equipment forever, and you can just look at something and kind of get an idea of how well it is built. And uh, like I said, everything was pretty much as expected. Now they're gonna be having other auctions. Uh, so like I said, it's in Rogers, Ohio. If you're interested in something like that, I'll probably check out the next one and, and see. I would at some point like to get a mini skid loader, one of those stand-on ones. Uh, at first, I didn't see much use for one, but the more that I look into them, I think it'd be super handy to have. Uh, around the sawmill for firewooding, like with the skid loader, that 97 is an absolute beast. But, you know, a lot of times I just need to lift the slab off the sawmill. If you're down there by yourself, that stuff's very heavy. You know, it might be 300 pounds and you're sliding it onto the forks, but you're climbing up over the forks, getting in the skid loader to move one slab over to the pile. Just moving, you know, big firewood rounds. So I think like a mini skid with just a bucket, grapple, forks, maybe even a post hole digger. Uh, I think it'd get used a lot around here. I really do. So maybe at some point we'll get one of those. I don't think, I know it won't be one of those Chinese ones. Uh, I just don't think. I like just the better stuff that you know is gonna last that will hold its value a little bit. Like a good example of that, that Bobcat 300, 3,100 hours and some change what is that, 18 years old, and it sold for $21,000. I'm not 100% sure, but that machine was probably around $40,000 new. So, you know, take uh, maintenance and fuel. If you couldn't make, I'm sure you made $19,000 over 18 years, whoever had that machine, or should I say, got at least $19,000 worth of work out of it. That's a no brainer. So in my opinion, equipment is not a bad way to go, especially with uh, inflation. Uh, it's kind of a good hedge against that if you have a use for it and you can just use it, make some money with it, hold on to it. And the price of the new ones keep going up and up, which drives the price of the used ones up. And now there are times where the market softens. I think we're in that phase right now, but it's nothing compared to overall inflation numbers over the last several years. So I like equipment, I do. Like I said, I think the next thing will be a, uh, a mini skid, probably not for a while. I still need to get a dump truck. I wish, uh, boy, that one Adam has is really nice. It'd be great if they would uh, make something like that today, but they don't. I'll be getting one soon. The Bronco is still sitting in the garage. We don't drive it very much. So that's the trade bait that I'll use for that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you're interested in this type of thing and 
tractors and equipment and sawmills, consider subscribing to the channel. And I think that's about it for today's video, and we'll catch you on the next one.